Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, the play's the thing. With your host, Judy Sleed, and special guest, Melissa Gillespie. Now here's Judy, Judy, Judy. Yes, that's me. Thank you, <laughs> Lee, once again for the play's the thing. And today I have Melissa with me. Hello, Melissa. Hello, Judy. You're it's looking nice to see so you again. pretty, beautiful with all those jewelry. I really love jewelry. Thank you, and so do I. And you're wearing it so well. Thank you. So I hear that uh, you're doing, uh, you're cooking with children. Yes, I'm still cooking with the children. Yes. And uh, but it's developed into something uh, new and exciting. Another venture is I'm currently working in the. I'm a consultant at the John Marshall Elementary School for Project Most. And that's in uh, East Hampton. That's in East Hampton in the elementary yeah. school. Uh -huh. uh, Project Most is a not-for-profit organization that operates in the Springs, East Hampton, and Wayne Scott School Districts. And they teach unique aftercare, after-school programs for the children. And I'm teaching the fourth graders at the John Marshall Elementary School to cook. Oh, so this is after school. This is not after in school. school. It's not school in school. Course. It's not during school. Oh, I thought it was part of the curriculum. <laughs> it's not part of the curriculum. Oh, that's even better because then uh, the children are occupied with something useful. Exactly. And um, it, we weren't sure how it was going to go. And we started off with a small group, and that group grew to 20, which was a lot for me to teach at one time. So we've broken it down into smaller groups, and we should be restarting. We're on a hiatus for the next two weeks, and then restarting uh, like the second week of April. And I'm also possibly going to be teaching the third graders. It was very funny because the one day when all the children, the third and the fourth grade, wanted to attend the class, I couldn't have that many students. It wasn't safe for them. And they were crying their little eyes out because they wanted to cook with me so badly. Who would have known? So they have a lot of fun. I teach them basic, simple, healthy. So you have about, you say about 20 children in right. this well, group? Well, there was at one point, but that was a lot to stay focused because I do it for just about a two hour period from four to six or quarter to six. And all the children have the opportunity to actually handle the things they that handle do? knives, they handle skillets. The the school doesn't have a home ec room. So I'm totally portable. So I have electric skillets, I have griddles, I have burners, and I bring all the utensils and uh, the children get the opportunity to learn the safe way to use this equipment. So give me, can you give me a, for example, what do you make with them? Certainly. Um, let's see, we made uh, grilled chicken. The other week we made grilled chicken and uh, we made garlic toast on a griddle. Because remember, we have no oven and uh, a very simple marinara sauce, just crushed tomatoes with some sweet basil in it. And they made like little chicken cutlet parmesan, but we didn't bread the chicken in it or anything like that. We keep it very so simple. So when they, you got the chicken, it came all cut up. I no, I showed the kids how to cut it up. Oh, you did? But in this particular circumstance, I don't know, a lot of people don't know this. If you have a cut on your finger and you're dealing with raw chicken or raw meats, you can get sick. The bacteria can go through your finger into your bloodstream. So I wasn't able to let the children cut that particular um, mm -hmm. part of it up. But they cooked it, they got there, and they grilled. We made grilled pineapple skewers with maraschino cherries. So each child had a chance to put something in the sauce. One yes. Said, okay, I'm going to put the garlic, no, I'm going to put the tomato, and they each had a chance. They each had a chance to do that. They mm -hmm. made couscous, and many of them had never had couscous before. Oh. And they all ate it, and they loved it. And we also made, uh, like, we did stuffed peppers. Wow, that's a I big I parboiled job. the peppers at home, and I explained that to them and how mm -hmm. to do it. And um, they loved that. We made stuffed peppers. We made mm -hmm. barbecued ribs the other week, okay? 
Um, so you come with all the, not only the equipment, but the food also, you're coming with everything. Yes, I come with everything. So who helps you schlep all that? <laughs> 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 and it's a lot of schlepping, as you say, absolutely. Um, sometimes if my husband's around, he'll help load it up into the car. I usually start my prep work on Thursdays uh, to get ready for Fridays, because I'm only currently teaching, doing this one, one day. day a week, mm -hmm. but it's going to branch out to two. And um, luckily, uh, I met a young woman who's going to turn 20 next week. Her name is Melissa Innerman. And she, like my son, suffers from autism. She also has Asperger's. And she tried to go to college and it didn't work. And she was looking to volunteer. And she came with me a couple weeks ago and really liked it. And the children absolutely adored her. So for right now, she's volunteering to help me. And if I don't have anybody, I don't have anybody. <laughs> the kids are really good about coming out to the car with carts and helping me put the stuff on. Um, they're very enthusiastic. They all, they all want to volunteer all at once. Their enthusiasm and their energy, uh, the opinions, you should hear the political opinions these children have about, yes, I'm talking <laughs> fourth graders about how they feel about Obama and about Clinton and about McCain. They are really, really, really amazing. They are up on the news. They are up on the current events, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's terrific. Well, this is really great that you're doing this after school because uh, no one ever thought of it. They just have playtime, but this is like being useful. Well, Project Most is run by the director is Tim Burden, and his assistant is Rebecca Morgan. And you, they could, you, people, if they're interested in, other schools are interested in Project Most, they have a website at www.projectmost.com. What well, does most stand? Making the most out of school time. Oh, uh, exactly. Clever. Very clever. Absolutely. And I'm also giving an open casting call. Uh, I have for families, the community businesses. I'm getting my uh, summer schedule ready to continue going around Cooking with Kids. That's the show that I have on LTV, is Cooking with Kids. And I do location shots. We go to businesses, we go to homes. Um, to the beach. We did the beach this summer. We did a, sh a shoot from the beach um, with the children. So anyone who's interested should give me a call at 631-332-1647. And that's how they can reach me. Or they can reach me at Dear Doc Doe Productions, which is 631-680-3848. So we're getting mm -hmm. scheduling for that. So give me a call and come and have fun with us. And you could learn how to cook from Melissa. And it's basic, simple mm -hmm. cooking. I teach the kids how to read the back of labels when they go to the store. Oh, that is okay. very important. Very important. We're so technological now that everybody's rush, 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 rush. The microwave is so simple for the kids to go to, but it's unhealthy. And we have an epidemic of childhood obesity. You're so right. Okay. And they all eat the fast foods, which is so bad. Exactly. I did, I did a cooking show. I did uh, one of the classes with the children was just simple scrambled eggs. Did you teach them how to break an egg? Yes, and some of them had never <laughs> broken an egg before. That must have been exciting. And it was very exciting for them. Mm -hmm. And we started just plain scrambled eggs. Then we kicked it up a notch and we put some cheese in another batch. And then the next batch I had them cut uh, sweet onions and green peppers. And children who, this is what I try to explain to parents, if you get your child involved in what they're eating, you would be amazed at what they're willing to eat. They'll try it just because they made it, they created it. And children, they couldn't believe how we went from that, that, to that. And children who didn't ever eat green peppers before were eating green peppers. Some of them even ate them raw. They would bite into an onion. So it's mm -hmm. amazing to see what they do and how so excited true. they get with it. And mm -hmm. we're so technological that we don't take, you know, we, we're, we're into our computers and our cell phones and our Blackberries and that whole thing. But 
I think that one day, you know, we're going to out-tech ourselves. What happens when somebody <laughs> pulls the plug? I always say that it's going to be a big glitch. I always say that. Right. What are we going to do? And what are we going to do then? What, yeah. what is a child going to do? How are they going to feed themselves? They're going to freak out. How are they going to write? Okay. They don't even, do they still teach how to write in schools? <laughs> uh, they do teach how to write in schools, but um, for me as a parent, I just recently purchased a laptop. Mm -hmm. And I waited until my son was in third grade, and he can only go on the laptop to use his school's website, and he has to do it with me because I wanted him to have the basics of reading and writing. Yes, and that's what I that. apply with the cooking, too, to teach them mm -hmm. just boil water, crack an egg, mm -hmm. make a piece of toast, make a sandwich. We did mm -hmm. the very first thing we did with them is I taught them how to use whole wheat wraps, and because when kids get home from school, they're very, very hungry. I find at least my son is and other parents that I talk to. And how can I get them to eat a healthy snack? So we got the whole wheat wraps, some mm -hmm. uh, Nutella, which is hazelnut and cocoa, and some apple butter because some of the children had peanut allergies, but it could be done with peanut butter. And then I gave them a variety of toppings, pine nuts all chopped up, almonds all chopped up, uh, dried cranberries, dried That's raisins, delicious. and bananas, and they all made a snack. Uh -huh. And I say to them, I send them home with recipes. They can go home with the recipes so that they can do it for their families. It's better than having a cookie exactly. or ice cream. Exactly. I talk to them about shopping lists. Do they participate in the shopping list with their parents? Mm -hmm. And if you get your kids to do that, you'll get them to be able to eat lots of healthy food. And the children could teach the parents how to eat right, too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And yes. it's, it's, it's very simple. You just got to get in there and do it. And it's a lot of fun. And the other thing I'm excited about is that my son, as I said, who has Asperger's syndrome, which is high functioning and autism, um, and oppositional defined disorder. This was very important because food, he had a lot, the food couldn't be a certain way, it couldn't, if you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich one way one day, you gotta make it the same way the next day or it's no longer a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So f feeding him healthy um, and properly was a big obstacle for me to overcome. And through my cooking and doing what I'm doing, it helped him. And tomorrow we're going into New York because he's going to be partaking in a study at Cooney University for 9 to 13-year-olds, both boys and girls, uh, with an environmental psychologist uh, as to how they react to their surroundings. And your son is uh, 8 or 9? He's 9 years old. He's, he's in the third old. grade. And um, it's going to be his first trip into New York City. Wow. So we're going to be documenting it. And it's how going he, to be how he's experiencing how his experiences. He wants to go to the Empire State Building, which is right across from the research center. So we're going to do that. He's never been in a tall, tall building before. So that's, it's going to be oh, very exciting. Think, what does he feel about? It? Is he scared or he's excited? He's frightened about the noise. He's excited. Uh -huh. But mm -hmm. for my son, um, one of the things that he reacts to is loud sound. And of course, as we know, New York City is very noisy. It's not a quiet place. Um, an example, my girlfriend had taken him over the winter to uh, Sag Harbor for when they do the bells at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And once they started to play the bells, he had to go inside. He put his hands over his ears and he had to go inside because it just caused mass confusion within his head. He couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. So that's what this study is about. So uh, your son, when did you uh, realize that he had this uh, condition? Well, I always knew something was up, but I didn't know exactly what. He did everything early, and he was never interested in con toys his age for his age group. And when we childproofed the house, he took a, as soon as I put it on, he took it apart. Oh. He was interested in electric gadgets. He wanted to take things apart. He wanted to find out how they worked. And I started to research. You know, you, as a parent, you start researching. And you can't test them until they, like, reach the age of four. And then you start the psychological tests. And that's what I did. Um, and he has a very high IQ. His IQ is 
138 as of last testing. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty high for a four-year-old to have. He just recently mm -hmm. has been retested, um, but we don't have the results back yet. Um, and I stayed on top of it as a mom. I did as much research as I could because everybody wanted to go, medication. Uh-huh. And you cannot fully do the other tests on the brain and the body until the child is, for boys, I don't know about girls because I have a boy, but for boys until they're seven years old, okay? Mm -hmm. They have to have a certain balance in their brain of chemicals. And Asperger's is a chemical imbalance in the brain. That's what it, the condition stems from. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did behavioral charts. I did the diet. I did everything that I could. And I did that for two years. And finally, by the second month of first grade, because of his violent outbursts, I had to put him on medication. And I'm one of those parents that was so against it vehemently against it. Um, he also sees a psychiatrist. You have to get involved with what's going on when your child has some, a condition, any condition for that matter. But mm -hmm. psychiatrist, he goes to counselors. So it's very well-rounded. The school, he sees a, a counselor. Um, most people right now, if you meet Max, you wouldn't know. They say, oh, they're surprised. Oh. They're very surprised. But mm -hmm. um, I did finally put him on medication. He's on small doses. He's on Abilify. Um, and he takes mm -hmm. six milligrams of that and 10 milligrams of Prozac. And the other thing with the healthy cooking with the kids is that a side effect of the Abilify is weight gain. And unfortunately, he suffered that side effect. So it was even more important for me to make sure that we were getting our fruits and our veggies and our whole grains and, yeah. and mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. He's very physically active. but. Um, and hopefully one day we'll be able to wean him off of it with everything that we're doing. You never know. You don't. And you I've seen know. doing the cooking program with, with him, mm -hmm. I've seen such a growth. And he does some cooking too? Oh, he's right in there with mommy. Yeah. Sometimes he takes you know, his breaks. I'm just looking at your nails. Do you cook with those nails? Yes, I do. How do you do that? Uh, like this. Are those your real nails? No, they're not. No, aren't you afraid you're going to lose one in the dish? <laughs> it's funny you say that because I have had technical difficulties where I've had to stop because I've popped the nail off. Yeah. By the way, I do them myself. I do not go to a salon to do them. Well, it's beautiful. Thank beautiful. you. Beautiful. Thank you. Yes, we've had that happen, but it hasn't landed in the food. No. So we haven't eaten any nails, so it's okay. <laughs> It's, it's okay. <laughs> we're, we're very sanitary. The kids wash their hands. We wash our hands yeah. all the time. So it's, it's being done the right way. But yeah. um, it's, it's great. I love what I'm doing. It's terrific. and it, it's So it's getting kids. recognition all over. I'm hoping so. Um, there are a couple of other schools that are possibly interested in doing something like this. And um, certainly I think uh, the parents are excited about what their kids are doing. I, I gave them DVDs to bring home this week to their parents because they want to see it, they want to see it, they want to see it. So, and I've had a couple of parents stop me and say, what, how did you get my child to eat that? I said, if you do what I did, you'll get your child to eat it. Let them do the, let them do the grocery shopping with you. Let right. them pick it out. Let them help you do a recipe. As long as you get them involved, once and you do, get them, they're going to they do it. Do you also let them uh, clean the vegetables and peel potatoes? And well, we don't that? peel the potatoes because there's a lot of nutrients in the potato skins. In the, perhaps in the new potatoes, but not the old ones. Right. Well, we different, different potatoes. It depends yeah. what we're doing with the potatoes, but they wash. I also make this very important, too, for the parents to, to know is that um, I make the children clean up their stations. Oh, that's oh, all. That's when they're wonderful. done with one, what we do is we space the meal out. First, we do whatever's going to take the longest to cook. If it happens to be the meat that week, that's going to go on first. Then everybody has to clean their stations, clean their hands again, and then we move on to the next project. I usually do, uh, we have uh, a main meal, and we have a vegetable and a side dish. Okay, and sometimes we have a dessert. Dessert, we're basing around different things you can do with fruit. Like the kids never thought you could grill pineapple. I was like, sure. So what you're saying is you, you're preparing the food, you're cooking it, and then you eat it, 
at the same time. And the children get to eat In it. In those two hours you do all that. Yes, with the well, kids. It's very well planned. I put a lot, of, I said to somebody <laughs> jokingly the other day, well, I only work one day a week, but I'm so tired. Uh -huh. And I don't really work just one day a week. Yeah. I'm really invested because I'm planning. I'm always thinking yeah. and planning and sure. researching recipes and watching Food Network all the time and getting on the computer and going into different websites. So, and you are cooking on top of the stove and in the oven also? Mm, there's no oven and there's no stove. Oh. Okay, the, because oh, there's right. no you home at, at John Marshall Elementary School. All right. So when you made the chicken, you, you cooked it on We a, did it on a griddle that you, a oh. flat griddle like you would do pancakes on. Oh, so what kind of chicken was that? It was chicken breast. Oh, so you and I grilled the it on both sides. Right, we grilled it in both sides. We sliced mm -hmm. it, it was sliced in, into uh, like two inch strips. Oh, I And then see. we drizzled a little olive oil and yeah. a little sea salt, because I taught the children that sea salt is healthier for them because it has lower sodium. Mm-hmm and uh, pepper, and just very simple, very basic with them. And they had a great, they love it, they love it. And also you have to <coughs> probably know in advance how many children come so you will know how much food to bring. So right, that's, that's the other thing, some. there's a budget to work with and um, they want to make sushi so badly. I got to work on that, but um, I work with a budget and Who's funding all this? Uh, Project Most pays for the food, but I also take a lot of things from my pantry. So it's mm. kind of 50-50, all right, because it's for the children. The children eat the meal right there, and if we run out of time, which mm -hmm. sometimes we do, they get to take it home. And they're happy uh -huh. to do that because they want to show their parents of course. what they did. But Project Most does, and um, I keep, you know, I look for what's on sale like I would for my own home. You know, it's very expensive to be out here on this side, and uh, I'm always shopping a sale and clipping coupons. So I keep that in mind when I go and I buy the food. I'm, I'm shopping for my family too. So whatever is on sale that week, I'm getting a little extra to bring to. Currently, I have 12 students. I, that's going to change again, I would imagine, in a few <laughs> weeks. But I keep it to what I'm doing in my own home too. So it works out nicely for everybody, and it, it's not expensive. Did you work with uh, spinach? We haven't worked with spinach yet. I'm looking forward to taking the children on a field trip. I have a bakery that would like to give them a field trip. And I'm, I'm not baking with the children. So that would be nice for them. And then uh, I live in Southampton. And there's a farm in Southampton that would like the children to come, that they uh, grow their produce. Um, and they have chickens, and they have pigs, and they have turkeys. So and get the children involved like that. Um, also, I want to take them over to the eco farm. Maybe they can plant a lot that they could tend. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of ideas on the table. And I just started this in January. So I've only been at it a couple of months. Hasn't been that long. I've had the cooking well, with kids yeah, for no, over you a are, year. You're just as excited today as you were when you talked to me about it a few months ago. Yes. And that's really great because the enthusiasm reflects on the children. The children That's pick up on success. it. Yes, the children pick up on it. And yeah. I, from their energy, it helps me, you know. Yes. Try, try sitting in a room with 12 kids and teaching yeah. 12 children to cook. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, but, and then the one day where I had the 20 of them, that was, but we did it. We did it. You know, kids, you can't, I like to think outside a box. I don't like to be put in the box, and children don't want to be put in a box either. Mm -hmm. And so with me, they, they like, they, they go with the flow, they go with the flow, but with children, as parents know, you never know what to expect. And yes, there are mm -hmm. rules that we have to obey and certain things we have to do, but yes. sometimes it doesn't always go that way. Mm -hmm. And so you got to kind of like, uh, I like to say, I, I just keep flying by the seat of my pants because we're not scripted. It's not scripted what I do, just like coming and talking to you. This isn't scripted. No. <laughs> so you just kind of get in there and you yeah. just kind of go and you got to wing it. And whatever happens, happens. Uh -huh. Just like you asked me about my nail. Well, yeah, I've yeah. had one pop off in the middle of a segment. <laughs> Absolutely. And you just keep going. You just keep going. Yes. I, uh, many years ago, I ran a 4-H 
group for girls, mm -hmm. and I taught them how to break an egg. I'll never forget that. You know, like you said, you're doing that also. So exactly. it's an experience. Next, one of the things I want to do, it's funny you mentioned 4-H. I loved Girl Scouts, mm -hmm. and it was my best experience ever when I was growing up. And I was looking over some things the other day, and I remember when they taught us how to make butter, fresh butter, wow. by using mm -hmm. a plastic container. So this is one of the upcoming things that I'm going to be doing <laughs> with the kids. That's what if you don't have a grocery store to go to? Right. What if you don't have butter? What can yes. you substitute? So that's one of the things I was going to do with them. And as soon as the weather, as long as things continue the way they are, I want to get them out into the community. As I, that's why I said it, there's an open casting call to the community. You know, give me a call at 631-332-1647 or at Dear Ducto Productions at 631-680-3848. We're looking mm -hmm. for people. Come, call us. Come and work with us. We'll come to your house. We'll come to your business. We'll come to your farm. Um, and bring the kids. And so they could cook. So they can cook and that mm -hmm. they can see what's out in their community and get them interactive in their community. It's important to keep it's them interactive in their program. community. It's a wonderful program. Absolutely. And do you wear aprons when you do that? Sometimes we do. Um, <laughs> but we haven't so far only because I had gone to a bakery shoot and I, I lost the apron. And I just haven't had a chance to get one yet. But once I see how many children exactly and where this is going to go, I'm going to order aprons for the children to use. I think that use. would be a good idea. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to order. I found a... Even I wear an apron when I do messy cooking. <laughs> we, you know what? We've been really lucky. Mm -hmm. The only person who has managed mm -hmm. to cut herself or spill something on herself has been me, the teacher. Uh -huh. The children, not at all. So we've been very lucky. Well, that's good. So no, the mothers didn't yell at you. No, none of the mommies have yelled at me yet. Well, I want to thank you, Melissa, for sharing this information with us. And I'm sure our viewers are going to love it, hear about this. And uh, don't forget to tune in for the Plays the Thing. Uh, wherever you are, you never know where you're going to find us. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You never know where we're going to appear. <laughs> And goodbye, and Bye. I'll see you. I'm taking two weeks off, but I'll see you again. The play is the thing. Thank you for having and, me. And uh, it's been so delightful. I, uh, I'm really very happy you're doing this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to. So, uh, I'm going to look. I'm going to look for it and watch it on. Television. Uh, LTV, Channel 20. Uh, I was on TV at 2.30, so.